Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are going hands-on with the new graphical demo from the Godot team. Now this was released a few weeks back for patrons, but it's now available for everybody. And one of those big things about the move to Godot 3.0 and then now 3.1 is a whole lot of improvement on the graphic fidelity side of things. The, the Godot engine just got a whole lot more capable when it comes to 3D graphics, but it hasn't always been obvious because we haven't had a nice demonstration to showcase this functionality. Well, that changes today, as you can see from the uh, TPS or third person shooter demo that we are about to see right now. So first I'm gonna show you some eye candy, then we will jump into the specifics of the demo, how to get it and all of those things. And you will notice right away that Godot is capable probably of much better graphics than you probably realize. Now this is going to chug a little bit on my machine because I am doing a video capture at the same time. This is running on a GeForce 970 for a point of reference. For some reason too, that first shot has a bit of lag. But other than that, this is the world in the third person shooter. You can see the graphic fidelity is just so much nicer than the old third person shooter demo. And the nice thing is this is open source. This is uh, CC by 3 licensed. Um, I don't think you can use it commercially. You have to give attribution if you use any assets from here. And a few of the assets are from different areas, such as uh, some are textures from Substance Designer, from GameTextures.com. There's a few audio files. Be sure to check the license before you reuse any of the assets here. But definitely you get full source code and resources for everything that is included in this demonstration. And as you can see, Godot is capable of probably much much better 3D graphics than you probably realized before. So let's go ahead and let this uh, this enemy take a shot at us. Come on buddy, you can do it. Some of the lighting is dialed up a little bit too much for my liking, but still, it's pretty astonishing looking. Like it, it's a, definitely a good looking demo. Now this is running on a three or four year old laptop running a 970M GPU. I also ran it on a 1050, it ran fine. A 1080, it ran great. And on an Intel HD 620 integrated chipset and it ran like absolute garbage, which is about what you would expect. But as you can see from this demo, Godot is capable of some pretty seriously good graphics. The other thing is, when we'll jump into the code in a second, you get an idea of how a full-blown game can be structured in Godot. It uses a slightly different approach than other game engines, but as you see here, it is a much more graphically capable, I think, than a lot of people realize. And that was a big part of the move to um, Godot 3.1, new global illumination modeling, uh, new... Uh, PBR workflow, completely new GLES renderer or GS3 renderer. Um, and yeah, here it is in action. And as you can tell, it's pretty good looking. So enough of me running around and letting my computer melt a little bit in the background. Let's jump in and take a look at the specifics of the demo, how to get it, what to do with it, and so on and so forth. So first off, I don't know how to actually quit the demonstration. <laughs> so I'll just Alt F4 out of this guy. But if we head on back here into my temp folder, you will see this is the TPS demo that I downloaded. Once you've got it, it is about two gigs in size. It includes all of the 3D models and assets you're going to be using here. Also, the first time you import it into Godot, there is quite an import process. So I'll go ahead and make some tea after you first load the project and you should be good to go. Uh, so it is, as I mentioned, two gigs in size. You can grab it from... Oops, uh, over here on the Godot website. So if you go to the Godot GitHub page, the very root of their GitHub, you'll see they now have a repository called TPS Demo. TPS Demo is what you want to do. You want to come on in here and clone it. So just come down here, grab the uh, repository link right here, do a copy to your command line, and then just switch on over and do a git clone and then that address, and it will pull down all of these assets, as I mentioned, the whole grand total is about two gigs in size. Now, one thing to be aware of, this repository depends on uh, Git LFS. So the demo uses Git LFS to store the heaviest assets. So if you want to grab everything, you got to make sure you have Git LFS enabled. Um, I have it by default, so perhaps you do as well. But I think it comes down to your, your Git client's configuration. LFS stands for large file system. and allows you to grab bigger files that, you know, the media type assets that are used in here. And as you can see, if you screwed up, you can come back in and grab the LFS stuff later on once you've reinstalled it. So 
just be sure that you do have Git LFS support. Now, another thing that's important, at least right now, is you need to be using Godot 3.1. And the challenge is, as of at least right now, October the 8th, there is no 3.1. That is the developer build. So you either have to go grab one of the nightly builds or build Godot from source yourself. The cool thing is they do provide a link here. And of course, I will link this page down below. Uh, but they got a link here so where you can go and grab unofficial nightly builds that are being built on the... Um, build server by this fellow, which is very nice. So thank you to Kalinos for providing that functionality, but you do need to be using Godot 3.1. If you try to open this up in Godot 3.06, which is the current, most current version, um, it'll just fail. So uh, do be aware, you do need to use the most current uh, version of Godot. Uh, it also, as you can see here, the repository is big and asset porting is not well optimized yet, so expect a high CPU and RAM load when opening the projects for the first time. That's what I was talking about. Go make some tea when you first open it up. But once it is open, here you go. You can see the level, the way the worlds are constructed. Now, if you're not familiar with um, the Godot game engine, it structures everything into nodes and trees of nodes. Everything is ultimately a node or a hierarchy of node. As you can see here, we've got a main. Underneath that, we've got a scene root. Inside that, a robot skeleton. And then you see right here, these little icons right there, well, that means it is kind of a separate scene or a separate file. And the root of a scene or a file is just another tree of nodes. So you can break your stuff up into a collection of nodes that you can then drill down into. So for example, our player is right here. And we can open up and go into there and see him in action. Now, what the cool thing here is we've got our uh, main menu going on. So go back over here. See, here's how the main menu works. And you've got, you know, just simple. But the nice thing here is Godot is a 2D engine and a 3D engine, and it switches between them somewhat seamlessly. So we've got, this is the 2D view of our scene, as you can see our UI being laid out on top of it. And this is our 3D view of the scene. And then those two go together to create that title scene where you've got the animated 3D player in the background, and then the 2D on top of it. So when we go ahead and run our, our combined scene, you can see you can mix a 2D level and a 3D level seamlessly in Godot. So here is the 2D we just saw, and here is that 3D scene being rendered. So that's one of those things where Godot really shines. If you want to create a 2.5 or a 3D game with 2D elements, it just it does it very, very seamlessly. Now you'll notice here we also have a couple of settings. Uh, so you can come in here, set the uh, global illumination levels, uh, subsurface or subsurface scattering, ambient occlusion, I believe it was what SSAO stands for, anti-aliasing, you can set the resolution, and that's about it on that settings. And then we've also got the play button, as you saw here. But we come on back here, so how exactly is that UI being implemented? Well, let's go to the 2D, you'll see here, here's the main UI, and then the rest of it's just kind of hidden. So here is your main, that's what we're looking at right now. I'm just gonna make that invisible. So the UI just has our title right there. So if we wanna see instead the settings, we'll make the settings visible. Or we could close down settings and we can instead take a look at the loading screen, make it visible. So that is how you can, or we can actually make it really confusing and have everything on screen at once if we so wished. So that's how you can implement multiple pages very easily using a single UI. And you see again how the 2D and the 3D work together. Now, once you're ready to get going, come on down here. You can look at the various different assets down in the file system. But what you're going to want to probably do is go into level and then open up level.tscn. Now, once again, that is just a hierarchy of nodes, just like our main data right here is a hierarchy of nodes. So let's open up our major scene. And I haven't done this on this computer yet, so this might not be exceedingly happy with me. So I may pause in a second if this takes too, too long. So this is loading our game level for the first time. You see there we've got the, uh, the spinny I'm not happy logo. There you go. So we just loaded in. Here is the game world. Remember that room I ran to at the very end? Well, here it is. So we're at that fireball. If I, if I move down here a little bit, you'll see there should be some spiders. Yep, there's a spider going on. And then there was a hallway I came in on. Uh, where did you go, hallway? It's around here somewhere. Let's go find the hallway. There we go. So here's the hallway I came in on. There's that spider bot that we dealt with earlier. And once again, I'll come back here. Let's find the spider. There, where's the front? All right, let's get in front of the spider. And then I can select him, and you'll see we're... Oh, that wasn't him. Let's get him. Big Robot 2. So you see over here all the various different properties of him are selected, and you'll see he is selected in the world hierarchy. So this is your scene graph here, all the various things that go together to make it up. But you'll notice we've got the big robot, we've got multiple instances of it throughout our level. Well, any particular time I want to go in and edit that robot itself, I can just click here, and that will open up that scene, which again is, again, just a hierarchy of nodes. So let's cut on back through here. Uh, so this is where... Oh, no. 
I turned around. Let me just undo that. So I'm just basically going through the level in reverse order to what I showed it to you when I first started playing. So you can see all the things that go together to make it up. You got your lights here, you got your different uh, polygonal details, you've got your navigation mesh or collision mesh going on. There is another instance of that big spider dude. And then we come over here. There's where we jumped down. So let's climb back up and head on back. And there is us. So there is our character that we're looking at in third person view. We can go ahead and select them. I uh, got the door instead. Robot. So here you see robot is composed of kinematic body, physics body, collision object, a spatial object, and a node. But once again, this is our main character, but it is just a node hierarchy. So we got a script attached to him and we've got the node itself. I'm just gonna click that one up. And then what this did is basically opened up our robot in the scene. So right here, now I don't know why it does this. It really kind of pans you out quite a ways. It's way far away from the, the character itself. But here you can see how a character or an enemy or the main character can be structured inside of the Godot game engine. So here you've got the main character controlling us and you see there's that script that is attached to him. He's composed of a skeleton, skeletal details to various different parts of the skeleton, the gun bone where we're mounting the gun to, a uh, collision animation tree for animation players, collision objects, a camera that follows him. So if you want to implement a third person camera, you can implement it directly in the player object. So this is kind of how you can structure a game. There's the various different sound effects that play with this object. And this gives you a good example of how a full style game is broken up and structured inside of uh, the Godot game engine. And you can see also it's quite pretty. Um, and every object that you saw on the scene is, again, just this, this nice hierarchy of notes. So there's a very good logical consistency to the way that data is structured in Godot. It makes it very easy to learn. And then finally, let's take a look at the script, and you got an idea of the kind of script that is controlling. So this is basically the player character controller. And it's really not that much to it, right? Like, on the whole, like, we're not really doing too, too much here, which is kind of cool. But so you can see how to actually control a character, how to uh, handle input to them. And then we go back, I could go back over to the level. We can switch between open files over here. It's still going to be a bit of a lag since it's such a big file. Uh, but you'll see it switched up here. Our cars are broken for some reason. Not sure what. Eh, it's just a warning. All right. So here's all the various different things that go together to compose our scene. Uh, let's do a full on scroll because there are a lot of them. And then again, any object within the scene that has something like this beside it, you can go in there to look at it, or we can look here, and this is basically uh, the master script that controls the entire level. And it's mostly just setting some uh, graphic settings based off of the settings that we picked way back in the settings menu, which if we went back over here again, and we scrolled up and looked, we will find that there is the script there. And this is the script that controls the menus and what people do when they hit the menus. So you see, it's not actually even that complicated, the stuff controlling this. It's just really um, organized and divided nicely. And again, that is one of the really cool things about the Godot game engine. But I think you'll agree after seeing this that uh, the Godot game engine is capable of some very very impressive graphics and I, I'm, I'm really happy that this demo is available because it can really showcase to people what Godot is capable of that perhaps they may not have been aware of before and that's one of those challenges that open source projects have in the first place is um, you need to have AAA quality assets to, to really kind of showcase what a AAA engine or art package can do. And so it's nice to see this stuff out there because this takes a ton of work to create something like this. So kudos to the people in the community that contributed toward this project because it really does help showcase and, you know, highlight what a Godot is capable of. Just like the Blender having its newer, really high quality assets really helps show off how good the EV renderer is. This should help people to understand that the Godot game engine is a peer to the likes of Unity and Unreal Engine, that it is capable of graphics that are very modern and uh, very capable. Now, could this run on mobile today? I don't know, actually. That would be kind of an interesting challenge. Um, 
I, I should do a build for my iPad and see how well it runs. Uh, but that is definitely one of the things here is you're gonna have to optimize it for your various different scenes. We switched between renderers and this is very much experimental. So I don't know what's gonna happen here, but if I switch to GLE, ah, I don't wanna do a reset. Uh, I don't know what happens to the graphic fidelity because now there are two renderers in uh, the Godot 3.1 engine. The GLES2 one is a backport that is uh, very much under active development, but with it, you generally get a crappier result, but a lot better performance. So if your machine is struggling to use this guy, do give the ES, a GLES2 a shot. See if it runs a bit better. But I'm not going to restart that just to, um, you know what, I'm already long enough on this video as it is. I'm at the 15 minute mark just showing off a, a demo that's available. So yeah, I think I'll call it a break right there. But again, the link is down below and congrats to the Godot team. You created something that really showcases what the Godot engine is capable of. Um, and it'll help me make a cover for my upcoming book because this just looks so much better than all of the assets that were available beforehand. So it's nice to see this is available for the community at large. Again, a couple of reminders, you need to have Git LFS um, enabled in order to get all the assets when you do a checkout here and you need to use Godot 3.1 but other than that have fun playing around it's a very cool project and it'll actually show you how to break your uh, tasks up so you can make a complex game um, in a very modular and maintainable way well I hope you found that useful I will talk to you all later goodbye